Hey guys, thanks so much for watching, tuning in to Chef Colette. Here is another video. I hope you've seen my first video where I was actually skinning a whole side of salmon and slicing it into pork it's the way I prefer to do it because it looks beautiful on the plate and it also cooks um, a lot faster. If this video gets to 100 likes, then there will be a surprise. So push the like button, make a comment, subscribe and hit the bell for notifications mm. so, you so you can make sure that you don't miss any of my videos. I'm going to actually pick out of the comments something that one of you told me to do. Comment so on things that you might want to see me making or want to know how to make, okay? And then I will pick something out of the comments and I will do it for you, all right? And we'll work it out together. Thank you again so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and the bell, ding. And also comment. Today we're going to be making some salmon croquettes. Some people like to call them salmon patties. I call them salmon croquettes. We'll be using a traditional recipe that I've been using for years. My family loves them. So I hope you will too. So I use red onions, red bell pepper, green bell pepper, and I also use the orange bell pepper. Just use a quarter of each and you'll be fine. All right. Um, I do like a lot of onions in mine. If you don't, you can use onion powder. It doesn't matter. Whatever you choose, okay? I also, um, of course, seasoned it. Uh, use salt and pepper for basic seasoning because I don't really like to kill the taste of the salmon So you'll notice in my mixture. There's not a lot of um, Different type of seasonings in it because I like the taste of the salmon itself So I don't like to overpower it. All right, and nothing to it really really basic and I'll put the um, all the information in the description so For this recipe, we're gonna be needing some salmon of course We'll also need, like I said, the onions and the bell peppers, whichever bell peppers you choose. Doesn't matter. You can just use green. Some people do. Doesn't matter. Um, then you're also going to need some butter. You're going to need some crackers. And you'll also need some eggs. And, of course, the salmon. Now, I use canned salmon, pink salmon, um, busy bee, uh, the bumblebee. That's what it is. So, yeah, bumblebee. So, um, but, you know, pink salmon, red salmon, whichever one, again, it's just really a preference. So, um, choose the one you like, the canned um, salmon that you like, and that's what you use. I used three cans for this recipe, so it yielded about 15 to 16 patties. I made them, no, actually, I probably only got eight. Let me stop lying. Like, I only probably got eight or nine because I made them pretty, you know, big. But you want to make them smaller, especially if you're feeding um, more people. And so, but I was just rushing through it because I was tired. And I just really wanted to get this video done for you guys. So, again, hit the subscribe button. Let me know what you think about the video. And also let me know if you want me to do different recipes. Because I love to try new recipes. So, if you guys have something you want me to try, just go ahead and leave it in the comments. And we can get to it. All right? So... I hope you guys enjoy this video and also check out my other video where I was showing you how to skin a salmon. It's amazing. It's my first video and I think it's probably my best video so far. <laughs> I only got one video up. But anyways, um, thank you again for watching and let's start cooking. Okay, so we're gonna, we have our butter melting here. So we're gonna add our bell peppers and onions to. And as you can see, they're cooking down. But we want them cooked down more than this because again, it still has a lot of water in the vegetables. So we want it to cook down. Okay, and now as you can see, the peppers and onions have started to caramelize. It smells really good. At this point, you want to take these out right when they just when they start browning. You just mix all the ingredients together until you have like a consistency of like a dough almost. But yeah, as you can see, it's, it's wet, but it's not super wet. You know what I mean? Kind of like it's still tacky to the touch, 
So if I touch it, it still comes off on my hands, but it's not so wet that I can wring any moisture out of it. And you begin to make your patties with this. I'm just gonna wash my hands. Okay, so you're gonna just pour your oil. And we want like about an inch. Maybe an inch will be good because we can just add more later. So just coat the pan. And I'm using a extra virgin um, olive oil canola oil blend. You're gonna take your mixture, all right? Oh, nice and pretty. Everything's all mixed up. You salt, put, I use salt and pepper. I use a little um, onion powder as well. And you're gonna just grab, and you can make your patties as big as you want them, but you don't want them too big that um, they don't cook in the middle. So I just grab some of the mixture. And of course, again, make sure that you wash your hands in between, before or after. Maybe you want a half inch around because you don't want them, again, too fat. Now, you can do them fat. You can do them round. I've seen people do them like in balls or whatever. And those are really fun too. But um, <clears throat> we're doing the patties today. Okay, so I have my patty. Now, in order to test my oil, I'm just going to use a little bit of my mixture. And I'm going to put that in there. See? So, obviously, <laughs> it's ready to go. And again, you just grab some of the mixture and just start forming it, like flattening it in the middle. <clears throat> That's what makes it spread out on the edges so you can round it off. And you just put your finger there and kind of roll, turn it. Put your finger there and turn it and you can make the patty shape really nice. And this mixture is pretty good, <clears throat> the consistency, because when you know the cracks are like mending themselves so that's when you know you got a really good mixture because it's tacky to the touch now you want to do this relatively quick or you can make your patties beforehand now they don't have to be perfect so we're not shooting for like the perfect circle we're just shooting for almost the right thickness so it's like a half an inch i think I think it's like a half an inch. Tell me if I'm wrong in the comments. <laughs> but, um, yeah, let me know what you think. If you like this uh, recipe or not. I'm just going to do four. Just for the sake of turning this girl over. Because she's already this one patty. Just for the sake of turning this one patty over. Because it's already browning. And you can start to see the edges brown. See? Beautiful. And so, <clears throat> these are cooking up really nice. I'm going to turn these because I can see through the edges are brown. That was a little browner than you know, but that's okay. And really, like, because of the egg in there. Like when it browns like that, it's so good. Like, okay. And you can adjust your heat as you need to. I'm just gonna kind of bathe them. I tilt it a little bit, the skillet. I tilted the skillet so that I could bathe the edges so that the edges get brown. A little trick oh be careful though because you could spill the oil on you so you just want to barely tilt your pan so you can actually um brown the edges now you could just add more oil and deep fry them but i try to use this, the least amount of oil as possible but i know it's quite a bit of oil even still and these copper pans, they hold the heat really well, so you're able to really control your cooking. And I, that's why I love these pots. Not just for the non-stickability, but also like the heat um, consistency. 
Like it cooks even all over the pan. Okay. So as you can see, it's like really crispy and brown. And they will continue to cook like any other thing, like carryover cooking. I'm just gonna brown this one on the other side a little bit. I just like them a little hard. The inside is already, you know, kind of mushy, so you wanna have a nice crunch. On the outside. And so this one's probably the, yep. Now, like I said, you could do a taste test before with a little bit of the mixture and just fry off a little bit just to taste it in case you need to adjust the seasonings or anything before you start frying. That's always a good idea to do that. And that cracker that I used was a butter crisp cracker. And so it gave it this like buttery flavor. I don't know. It's so good. And usually I would use Ritz or whatever, but I just wanted to use what I had in the house. Now, if you're the type of person that you really don't like them to caramelize this dark, which I don't know anyone who eats these and would deny that, you know, the caramelization is excellent. Um, this is something you can cook a little darker and it works. But if you're opposed to that, you can always deep deep fry them or even bake them but you could deep fry them and they would have a beautiful golden brown color to them and you wouldn't have this but these are the homemade version so <laughs> now whenever i'm at home i have to make these for my grandfather like he really won't let me leave town without making it. Now, the bubbles that you see here, that is the egg coming from the mixture. So, that's why I'm just letting it go. Copper pan is the perfect pan to do this way. Any other pan may have been smoking by now. All right, this is firm. Believe it or not. Okay. And we're done. 